today we will do uh, the topic of energy conversation as a student of have you, uh, as a student of o level physics and taking as physics as well you are well aware of the concept of energy and you know kinetic energy yes kinetic energy is given by what by 1/2 mg squared in mechanics if the velocity is constant then we are not interested in kinetic energy okay we are only interested in velocity kinetic energy if the velocity is increasing or decreasing if velocity increases from u to v then gain of kinetic energy is final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. or we can also write it like this but not like this not like this okay and if the velocity decreases from v to u from u to v then loss of kinetic energy is which is which is which is represented by l okay so for us the it's the change of in kinetic energy which is important and if something is moving with the constant velocity then we are not interested in its kinetic energy at least in this mechanics course of m1 okay now we know we are well aware of the idea of gravitational potential energy gravitational potential energy we sometimes represent it like this like gpe or simple pe it is equal to mgh and if something is moving on a level road or level horizontal road then there is no change in its potential energy and we are not interested in its potential energy okay if, if something is climbing height for example for example let's say that this is an inclined plane and this is the height h and this is the distance uh, we represented by s and an object moves from position 1 to position 2 okay if an object moves from moves from position 1 to position 2 then
gain of potential energy is then gain, gain is represented by capital g m g h and we know that h over s is equal to sin theta and h is equal to s sin theta so we can also write gain of potential energy is equal to m g s sin theta and uh, just to differentiate s from the s of sin why well, i change its color okay and the uh, s of sin has different color okay so this is sin just to differentiate between both i am doing this thing okay so this is how i can calculate the gain of potential energy and if some if a body moves from position 2 to position 1 then this is the, the same expression will be used for the loss of potential energy so if an object moves from position 2 to position 1 loss of potential energy is equal to mgh or mgs sin theta loss of potential energy now we move on to the point number 3 work done by the driving force driving force or engine force this is equal to driving force multiplied by the distance or the engine force into distance its engine force into distance and uh, we will explain it later on that it is also equal to average power into time is equal to average power into time okay <clears throat> and if the driving force it can be a pulling force by a string for example if this is an object over here this is an object and it is being pulled by a force f and you know theta it's making an angle of theta with the horizontal and the body travels a distance of s along the horizontal surface then it's actually f cos theta which has done work f cos theta has done work weight mg normal contact force and f sin theta have not done any work okay the reason that they are perpendicular to the displacement a force which is perpendicular to the displacement is not involved in any kind of work done okay so work done by a force making an angle with the displacement force 
which makes an angle theta with the displacement. And work done is equal to F cos theta multiplied by S. And R and Mg and F sine theta are not involved in work done as they are perpendicular to the displacement. So this is how the work done against uh, work done by the driving forces. Okay. Now comes the point number four, and that is work done against friction. Work done against friction. Work done against friction <clears throat> is converted to, to heat or thermal energy. Work done against friction is which is represented by WF is equal to frictional force multiplied by the distance. Or we can say resistive force multiplied by a distance. And in this motion, in this kind of work done, the displacement is opposite to the force, okay? The body is moving in this direction. The frictional force is acting over here. And the distance moved is in, the distance is moved in a direction opposite to that of uh, frictional force, okay? It is also measured in, it is also measured in joules, okay? Now, work done by the engine or the driving force is represented by WE, okay? So let's go to the granddaddy formula, uh, a, 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 a great formula. A great formula, formula of uh, energy conservation of energy conservation. which is applicable applicable in all situations of mechanics one course consider a situation that a car is descending, a vehicle is descending 
Our vehicle is descending from a mountain, okay? On a road which is very bumpy, on a road which is quite bumpy, okay? And the, the, the engine, the force exerted by the engine is in the direction of motion. The speed of the vehicle increases slowly from initial velocity u to v. The height is decreasing, hence the potential energy is decreasing. And you know, when some vehicle is coming down from a mountain or from a high height, the loss of potential energy helps the engine. The loss of potential energy helps the engine. And let's say that there is a resistive force, which I represent by capital D. Capital D for all kind of drag forces or all kind of resistive forces. We can even use capital R. When capital R appears in, the, in, in, in equations of energy, then capital R doesn't represent the normal contact force. Then it stands for the resistive forces, okay? So I can say that the work done by the engine is being helped by the loss of potential energy. And it helps body to gain some gain of kinetic energy and can do some work against friction. So this is a very useful formula. And it's quite helpful in solving all the energy conservation formula uh, problems. Okay. So let us write it like it is work done by the engine, work done by the driving force plus loss of any kind of energy. This can be a loss of potential energy. This can be a loss of kinetic energy. And uh, capital G represents a gain of any kinetic or potential energy. And WF is the work done against friction. Okay. So let's uh, apply this formula in variety of cases. Applications. Application number one. Let us suppose that a ball is dropped from a height one and it reaches position two. It falls down a distance h. And let's say that height involved is so less that we ignore all kind of frictional forces. We ignore all kind of air resistances. Okay, so loss of potential over here, what we'll do is that we will see this whole situation with the help of this formula. We will try to see every problem with the spectacles of this formula. There is no engine, so loss of work done by the engine is zero. There is a loss of potential energy. And the speed of the vehicle as speed of the object has increased. And it has maximum speed at the bottom. So there is a gain of kinetic energy. And since we have ignored all kind of resistive forces, so mgh is equal to half mv square. And we can cancel m. We will be left with g square, gh over v is equal to v square over tau 2 and V square is equal to 2GH. No, you could have simply, you could have simply said that loss of potential energy is equal to gain of kinetic energy. You're, you will be right. But you should always use this formula and uh, should try to understand that where you, uh, which, which component of this formula is not being used, okay? So this is, uh, always see any problem with the, uh, under the uh, spectacles of this formula, okay? Always, use the, um, apply, try to apply this formula because this will protect you from any kind of mistake, okay? Now the same situation can easily be applied to us. Uh, the same formula can be applied to a situation where the a body slides down from on an inclined plane. A body slides down on an inclined plane 
and its speed increases and it has a velocity v at the bottom and let's assume that the surface of the inclined plane is smooth since the surface of inclined plane is smooth we will simply say that there is no engine and the loss of potential energy is equal to gain of kinetic energy and there is no work done against friction so we can write the same formula and we will arrive arrive at the same answer similarly if an object is thrown from position 2 and it goes up and reaches the position 1 and position then you can apply the same formula there with, with, with only difference is that in this case when you throw something up you will say that loss of kinetic energy is equal to gain of potential energy there is no work done by the engine and loss of kinetic energy is equal to gain of potential energy with no work done against friction so now we write it like this okay no yes, sir yes i'm listening sir can you explain the slope one again yes you know if something slides down from position 1 to position 2 and there is smooth this the surface is very smooth when the surface is smooth there is no work done against friction okay when the surface is smooth there is no work done against friction and when um, an object so Uh, and, and since there is no driving force nobody is pulling it down it's just coming uh, down as as, as it at its own so we will say that the loss of potential energy uh, uh, loss of potential energy is equal to gain of kinetic energy in this application this height h is important okay this distance s is not important if the inclined plane is smooth then this inclined plane uh, on this inclined plane or in this inclined plane both have same height so body moving from position 1 to position 2 over here will have same velocity mm. no matter mm, uh, what is the angle of inclination okay if the inclined plane is smooth you can safely apply loss of potential energy is equal to gain of kinetic energy i hope it's clear yes okay <clears throat> let us move on to the application number 2 this inclined plane has a distance height h and its length of inclined plane is s and this is the angle theta okay and this is a rough inclined plane okay it's rough and h is related to s by h is equal to s sin theta okay now let's say that this surface is able to apply a frictional force f okay the frictional force acting is represented by a small f okay and we assume that this is constant okay we assume that this is an average frictional force okay okay no we leave an object at position 1 and it reaches at position 2 and its speed increases slowly becoming maximum at position 2 okay and there is friction act also acting okay no again using that great formula of energy conservation work done by the engine is zero because there is no driving force a loss of potential energy has occurred 
and a gain of kinetic energy has taken place plus work done against friction frictional force into distance we can say mgh loss of potential energy is equal to gain of kinetic energy plus work done against frictional force and we can even represent it with the help of a sankey diagram the diagram tells us that this is loss of potential energy this is gain of kinetic energy this is law work done against friction okay and similarly if something is falling from great height let's say that a parachute parachutist is falling down okay and its speed increased slowly let's say that he is falling in such a manner that his speed is increasing at a very slow rate and let's say that the total height it fell is capital h although that the resistive force of the air frictional force of the air drag is not constant but we can assume it constant for our calculation let's say d is the drag force average drag force because our formula will always calculate the average resistive force so we can apply this formula work done by the engine plus loss is equal to gain plus work done against friction there is no engine so the loss of potential energy the overall total loss of potential energy is partly converted to total gain of kinetic energy plus work done against friction in which the average resistive force multiply it to the total distance okay we cannot um, calculate the frictional force at all points okay so what we can do is that we can apply the we can calculate the average frictional force okay so these are the different applications of this formula and as we will keep on doing the questions we'll see that uh, okay let's uh, uh, we will see that this formula is uh, is able to help in all us uh, help us in all situation okay point number 8 okay if the speed is constant then can we still use this formula if the speed is constant then you will say that the loss of potential energy is just being utilized in doing work against friction okay because i told you that in m1 case if the speed is constant then you will not be talking about kinetic energy okay because you talk about the change in energy okay okay you will you you will not you will not be talking about uh, kinetic energy if, if the speed is constant okay okay let's do another question let us assume that there is a cubical box which has been kicked initially and so it has an initially high speed and as it slides down on a horizontal surface it comes to rest okay after traveling a distance of after traveling distance s okay and we assume that an average constant frictional force small f was acting on it as it moved from a to b okay and we will start our proceedings after it has been kicked after the foot of the soldier has left it okay so work done by the engine plus loss is equal to gain plus work done against friction there is no engine 
a loss of kinetic energy has taken place and there is no gain and the work done against friction is frictional force into distance. So one by two mu square is equal to F into S, okay? Over here, the loss of kinetic energy is entirely used in doing work against friction. Do you understand this thing? Yes. Okay. And 8A, 8A means a closely linked point. Let's say that this is a wooden block. The dis this is distance S, okay? A pistol fires a bullet and that bullet penetrates the block, okay? That bullet penetrates the block and while it was entering the block, it had a velocity V1 and when it was leaving the block, its velocity was V2. And let us assume that an average frictional force or resistive force F was acting on it as it moved through the block. Its initial velocity was high and its final velocity was small. It was slowing down, okay? So the same thing go up in case of, uh, we will start our proceeding from the position A from, to till position B. We are not uh, right now calculating what happened inside the pistol. So we apply work done by the engine plus loss is equal to gain plus work done against friction. From A to B, there was no engine. Only a loss of kinetic energy occurred. And there is no gain. And work done against friction is equal to frictional force into distance. This is how we apply it, okay? I hope you understand it. Yes. Okay. Let's say that this is a smooth surface. An object, an object is placed over here. A force F acts on it. And this moves it to a distance S. And since it, it started from rest, it continuously accelerated. And its final velocity at the end of the distance was V. Over here, the application of this uh, formula will yield the final equation. Work done by the engine, it's F into S. There is no loss of potential energy. There is a gain of kinetic energy. And the work done against friction is zero. So work done by the driving force is simply equal to the gain of kinetic energy. Okay, and if the initial velocity was not zero, let's say that it already had some velocity u, then the same equation will be like this. Force into distance is equal to gain of kinetic energy. And now, point number 10. This is a horizontal surface of a table. And there is a pulley over here. And this is a string that's passing over pulley and it's attached to a block. Let's say that this block M1 falls a distance S and in doing so, 
it exerts a force f on this dot okay this we call the mass as m and it also moves a distance s okay and its speed increases becoming v as the distance s ends and let's say that it was not a smooth surface there was a frictional force which was acting on it right from point a to point b even if the frictional force was changing we will still assume that frictional force is constant because we are not doing any complex analysis we are doing simplified analysis and we will be assuming frictional force to be constant okay now in this case work done by the engine plus loss is equal to gain plus work done against friction i am applying this energy conservation formula only to this block which is placed on the table i am not taking this m1 block into account which is falling vertically downward okay so i am applying this equation only to the block which is on the table work done by the engine is f into s there is no loss of potential energy there is a gain of kinetic energy and there is a work done against friction okay so you can say that the work done by the driving force f into s is is partly converted to kinetic energy and part of it is doing work against friction <clears throat> we'll continue to ex continue to explore the beauty of this formula but right now we are ending this lecture over here